line right here, perpendicular to mirror, bump the hip, there's the post, there's the brace, there's the spine angle, turn around the spine angle into the brace, push off the brace right around the post, and there's impact. You can see the shot shape come back though, right? Okay, so hey, we have our setup. We have the foot, left foot in front of right more, good. We have the hands forward, hips forward. Stand the chest up a little bit more. Right there, boom. There you go, buddy. And I don't wanna get that, yeah, you're getting the shot shape back. Now, once you start peering it, you'll feel it. Um, you, we don't wanna lose the lesson here today though. The lesson is, 100% the setup. Like not even a question. Both from the face on view and down the line view. We have all those checkpoints nailed in for you. You're gonna mark up an alignment rod. You're gonna start putting dots on the outside. You have the right width of stance. You're gonna have straight feet. For you that's gonna feel a little closed. The hip bump. And then using that setup, using this setup right here. If I'm a, if I'm a golfer at home watching this, I am getting in the mirror 100% and doing this. I mean, this is just like a no brainer. Line right here, perpendicular to mirror. Bump the hip. There's the post, there's the brace, there's the spine angle. Turn around the spine angle into the brace. Push off the brace right around the post and there's impact. And you have your two pivot points, we call them right here, right? Bump, boom, boom, right? And I'm mean, doing that all the time. Then you put a club in your hand Yeah, so it depends on the golf club you have, right? The weight, the weight depends on the club you have. So, you know, when we're in here, I feel like, you know, for me, when I'm hitting a wedge and I have a narrower stance and my weight starts, you know, to where I'm having a good 75% on my left side, I'll be honest with you, I don't feel with a wedge that I'm shifting any of that back in my feet. There, there, there could be some. In my mind, 75% staying right where it started. Now, now how about this? When I have a seven iron in hand, no doubt the inside of my right foot is definitely building more of that pressure. And I'm starting about 60, I'm sorry, 60, 40. And that's transitioning. That's going to about 60, 40. And then from there, right back into 100 right here, right? So that's, um, that's important to understand. And, and, and really with the driver, I'll be honest with you, wider stance, bump the hip. Well now, with the width of stance, increasing and the hip bump taking place, my upper body is now supporting, being supported by that inside of my right leg. And now 60% is here, 40% is here. I'm turning like another 20% into that and I'm just exploding off of it, right? And I'm enough behind the golf ball with the, between that and the ball position to where I never could get in front of it, um, as a, even, even though I'm making the attempt to move into it. And that's, and that's important to understand. So um, weight distribution, you guys, is all taken care of with the right setup. So when you set up with the proper width of stance for a wedge and bump an inch forward, it puts 70, 30. You have the right width stance, inch hip bump, whoa, it puts 60, 40. Then you get the driver out, bump an inch forward, and you feel it literally 60, now 40. So that's taken care of. And pretty much if you had to ask me um, it, what it feels like, based upon what it actually is, what it feels like is it feels like I load another 20% into my right side as my chest just turns over that right side. Um, it's more of than it is than an amount of pressure though. It's a certain level of tension that I feel that's the exact same every single time down my right leg. Does that make sense? Okay, so you want to feel like when, I, when you turn, this right side just lights up and it's all down here. And then from there you can just push right off to open up. Um, but that stuff's going to be huge for you. But I mean, just getting in the mirror at home and what I was getting back to is using that setup to shape the angles that you're trying to turn in in your swing. So when you're in the mirror, you look at it and you go hip bump. Okay, post, brace, spine angle. Boom. Right, and you're just doing that over and over and over, getting there really simply. What happens when you're setting up the way that you started the day, you have to then create those angles and your body's more spinning than it is really actually loading and coiling. Does that make sense? Okay, buddy. Listen, um, lots of great swings. The big thing for you was 
We talked about setup. We also talked a lot about some shot shaping at the end. You're gonna get behind a tree and you're gonna say, okay, I need to start this ball right at the yellow flag, but I need to turn it back to the white flag. Well, guess what? There needs to be a process we go through to make that happen. I aim out right at that flag. My club face is turning over to the, uh, to the uh, white flag and watch around that flag, back to that flag. Ooh, right? <laughs> so, you know, we, but, we, but hey, if you got that, it's really not too hard to hit it somewhat straight <laughs> because, you know, that's tough to do. Um, you really are trying, to, a lot of things have to go right there. But my whole point to you was, if I'm the golfer who's showing up and I'm getting really annoyed with my fade, and it's not changed and I've done everything I can do in my mind, I'm gonna hit a couple of those real quick and just feel what that felt like. And then just take my normal swing again. And it's amazing how some of that athleticism, we talk a lot about connection at Porzak Golf, like connection, body, hands connected, always together, rotation squares the club face. Yeah, that's great, but there is, there is 100% a massive element of just memorizing what these are doing because you can be connected and these can be doing different things. And connection does make them not be as active as most people have to be in order to hit it straight. But the big thing to understand about it is sometimes just a little training of the hands as it goes a long way. So when I talk about those little drills to where the golfer who's overdrawing it does this, and then the golfer who's overfading it does this, It's just basically nothing different than me having a ping pong paddle in my hand and just feeling what I need to be doing differently to create a certain spin on the golf ball. Okay? Lots of good stuff today. Lots of good stuff today. Gabe, always. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. Any questions or comments you have, please leave them below. Also, click the link below to pick up three free videos. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy our channel.